Hey, what's up everybody? This is Eric, the one and only Bayer Collector. And first of all, I want to wish everybody a happy new year. Hope you guys had a great holiday. Hope you guys had fun. But anyways, today I am doing my most memorable games of 2022 along with games that I took the monkey off my back. With that, what I mean is games that I completed that it took me a really long time to complete and I finally did it. But the first game that was memorable of 2022 was um, NES's Phantom Fighter. Now, this game, I actually did a video on it um, earlier in the year. Um, really fun game. And one of the reasons why this game was memorable was because of the movie. Um, I didn't quite know that this game was a movie. Um, it was a movie. It was based off a movie um call um i think it was called mr vampire which came out like in um either in china or hong kong if you can guys can watch my video i go more into detail of it but the movie was really good actually um it was made in the 80s and there's like a a, a lot of sequels to it but the game itself was also memorable because this is one of those games that i've always wanted to um play but I never had the opportunity to play until much recent. So that was the very first game that I that I beat and was memorable of 2022. Um, the next game, um, this one is very interesting. Um, and it, it's a um, Nintendo Switch downloadable game. And that is um, Boot Hill Bounties um, for the Nintendo Switch. Now, that game was very um, memorable because um, I had beaten part one the year before in 2021 and finally i was excited about boot hill bounties to wrap up the series supposedly um but unfortunately it's still going to continue there's still going to be a third um a, a third sequel to the game and that pissed me off because i thought the game was already over when i beat it and um it wrapped up a lot of things in the um in the series but it, it kind of threw in um, at the end, there was like a nice little twist. So it's going to um, continue. So I'm looking forward to that one um, when it comes out. Um, but anyways, the next game, this one, you guys are going to laugh at this one. But this one is Anticipation for the NES. Um, this game, I actually also did a review on it earlier in the year. Um, this is one of those games that you can find if you go to any flea market or any any shop. 90% of the time you're going to find this one, you're going to find it really cheap. But I was so surprised about this game because I thought it was actually pretty good. Um, I really enjoyed it when I played it and I really had fun making the video because I I've never played it. I would see it so often when I was a kid out in the wild and it and to finally wait until like 2022 to play it from like more than 20 plus years. Um, it, it was a nice little treat, but I'm, I'm happy I was able to enjoy it. I also did a video of it, so you guys can check that out. Um, and, you know, you guys can check out those videos. Um, the next one is another digital game for the Nintendo Switch. This one was very unique. Probably, well, no. I would say the all of the downloadable games that I have here. The next one is Rain Swept um, for the Nintendo Switch. Um, now, that particular game, I also did a video um, very underrated game. Um, it's a point and click adventure about a detective who goes to this small town that um, is there to help out wrap up a, a, a suicide, a murder suicide. People in the town think that, um, you know, that it was a murder suicide of what happened to a young couple um, that just had moved in there to the town. But he was reluctant and said, no, it's not. It's something deeper than that. And yes, it's something deeper. Great story. Um, not only that, the main character has his own demons to deal with, which makes the game very cool to to experience. Fortunately, the game had a... a I thought it was going to have a, a... I'm not going to spoil it. Very unique ending to the game. So check it out. I did a video of it as well, but check that one out. That's a good game. Um... Now, the next game um, that I played right after that one, I played um, Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Maya. Mayan or whatever. Um, it's this one. Oh, 
it's that one right there. Um, that one, um, I, I after I did Rain Swept, I, I played that one. Um, very fun Metroidvania. Um, I know that out there, out there in the, in, in, you know, when it first, I remember when it first came out, a lot of people were like, um, they were playing this game. I saw a lot of people um, playing the game and I actually had a chance to play it. It was super fun. It, it's like, um, Metroidvania, of course, um, if you guys played La Mulana, it's like La Mulana, but a, a bit easier and less confusing. Um, that right now, La Mulana is actually a game I'm, I'm playing to this day that in the future, if I ever beat it, it's going to be a game I'm going to get the monkey off my back. I've been playing it for a really long time, but that's the story for another day. But um, that one, um, Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Mayan, it's a really fun game. And I highly recommend you guys picking that one up if you haven't. Um, next game. This is a game that I got the monkey off my back. I've been playing this game. Not only this one, but the SNES and I believe the Genesis version. I think I own every single one. Uh, out of coincidentally, I, I, I ended up getting it. And that's um, Krusty's Fun House for the Nintendo NES. This game I've been playing for, God, for so many years. I actually began playing this game... Um, Man, way back in, um, I would say as an emulator, um, believe it or not. I, I don't think I owned this game when I was, when I was a kid, but I did pick up, um, this is my first copy. I never owned it before, but the Super Nintendo one was one that I had. One of these I had. I know that I have one of the copies. It might have been this one, but I finally, finally beat this game. This game can get really hard. For those of you who don't know about this game, it's a very fun um, 2D side-scrolling platformer puzzle game. Um, very reminiscent of Lemmings in some sort of way. Where you have to lead a group of mice in every room and and kill them. <laughs> and, and exterminate them, basically. That's a better word. And um, yeah. So, but really fun game. If you guys haven't played this one, pick it up. It, it's really fun. Um, I may do a video in the future of this one, maybe, maybe not, but a lot of these games that I'm about to talk about, I may do videos, already have done videos, or am planning to do videos, so, um, just peek them out, you know, if I don't, at least I covered them, this is why I do these videos every year, and at least I cover them, because at one point or another, you know, I wanted to do videos for these games, but it was really hard to do so, but moving right along. Now, this is the very first game of the year that I beat with my son. Um, and that is Kirby Star Allies for the Nintendo Switch. Um, what can I say? Um, Kirby games over the years. I'm a big, huge, huge Kirby fan. I, I haven't covered Kirby games yet. I am planning on doing reviews on some of them, if not many of them. Because I, I want to say I pretty much played every single Kirby game. With the exception of the Nintendo Switch ones. Um, sorry, sorry, not Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Wii. And um, and the Wii U. I own, I own, for the most part, a lot of them. But definitely, you know, I am planning on covering some. But anyways, first game that I beat with my son um, of the year. Um, we had a lot of fun playing this one. Um it's this was more reminiscent of the old school Kirby's um, Kirby games, but I don't know. It, it's still good. It can get hard though. This one for being a Kirby game, it could get difficult. And I don't know about you guys, but Nintendo uh, and a lot of recent Nintendo Switch games or Nintendo branded games, there um, the company is fooling you, thinking you beat the game and then you keep playing it. And I don't like that. You know, I like I don't like to be fooled in that way. Um, I'll go more in detail as I go along with some other games. But anyways, that one I completed with my son. The next one, this is um, I didn't. This is a game I should have put this on on my notes, but it is a game that I took the monkey off my back, and this is a game that um, I used to own many many years ago. Um, I bought it alongside another game. Um, I got the monkey off my back. I think I said that in 2021 at one point. Um, 
I don't know if I did a review on that other game, but I don't think I did. But anyways, um, I'm not going to mention it just in case I have it. But this one is um, Lester the Unlikely for the SNES. This is a game that, this is one of those games that I purchased um, back when KB Toys was around. I got it in the bargain bin many, many years ago. One of those games that I I was kind of like, you know, when I played it, I was kind of like, ah, oh, I didn't like it. Over the years, is one of those games that I, I wanted to beat. I tried it and then I quit. Um, but But it was because I never appreciated this style of game this is very reminiscent to games like out of this world um and and it wasn't until i played um oh my god what was that game and it was for the super nintendo um that i played that one particular game it's a very famous game anyways it's not it's not out of this world and it's not um it's not um but it's in that style um it was it was like he was a prisoner, kind of like with oh my god. I'll put if I remember the name, I'll, I'll I'll write it in the in the underneath the the notes of the video. I'll write the name of the game. But yes, very reminiscent to that. Learned to appreciate these games, and then went back and played it, bought it, and I played it and I beat it. So yes, finally got the monkey off my back. Really fun game. You you play this one nerdy guy who who was reading comics fell asleep in a boat and ended up in an island and was trying to find his way out um the interesting thing of this game is that you start out start out as being such a nerdy looking dude and then all of a sudden you know you you're, he's like eh, you know and all of a sudden he mans up he gets all like tough and everything especially because that that girl like in the cover right there is actually the the chief's daughter where where that he rescues early on in the game and helps him out on his quest to get out of the island and he becomes really you know kind of he mans up you know the next game the next game on my list okay this is another game that I got the monkey off my back too um and this is for the NES and that's Wizards and Warriors 3 um is it Kuro's vision of power or something like that? Anyways, um, this game, I used to own it when I was a kid. Very memorable game because I, I used to think that this game was super cool. However, um, with all Wizard and Warrior games, if you guys have played any of them, um, this one in particular is viewed as a, as a mini Metroidvania. And um, basically... Um, it, 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 it doesn't have a password or any save feature. So if you die, you die and the game can get really, really hard. But finally, one day using save states and cheats, I ended up passing it. Um, and it's one of those games that, you know, it, it just brought back memories from when I was a kid. Um, really fun game. And this is another series I may cover. Um, in the future because I think that all Wizard and Warrior games are great um, out of the there's four actually um, Wizards and Warriors Iron Sword Wizards and Warriors and then Wizards and Warriors 3 um, and then they have a Game Boy one that I've never played called Wizards and Warriors X that storyline is very interesting because for some reason they say that Wizards and Warriors X uh, from the Game Boy is kind of like a like a future sequel or I don't know, or it, it, the, the, the line, if I do a review on the games, I may explain it. I just need to get that one game, Wizards and Warriors X. So if I ever get it and I get everything, I'll probably do a, a video on them, but really good game. And I got the monkey off my back out of that one. Another game, I got the monkey off my back. And this one, you know, if my friend's watching, you know, he knows about this one and that's Muppet Adventures for the NES freaking horrible game you know <laughs> i used to own it when i was a kid i did a video on it you know i think the game it okay i should i shouldn't say it's horrible it's a good i think it's interesting i'm a muppet fan uh you know i like it very nostalgic game from when i was a kid however um i will have to say that um it, it, the mini games and all that, they could have done something so cool out of this game, but they didn't. And finally, I beat the game, and it's super difficult too. So, of course, I'm a, I use cheats and I use save states because 
the last level boss is insane. So yeah. Um, next game. Now this is another game I beat with my son. And, and God, if it wasn't for my son, I would never play these games. And that is Pokemon Shield on the Switch. Um, he's the one that's, that because of him, I'm playing Pokemon games. And I'm actually enjoying some of these. Um, the This particular game right here. Um, it took me, a, it took us a while to beat and we were playing it since, um, 2021. Um, but eventually during the summer we beat it. Um, this was around the time that, um, my family and I caught COVID. So we were locked up and I told my son, let's just play. I, you know, I wasn't able to work, wasn't able to do anything. We were feeling fine, but we couldn't go out because of that. So I told my son, let's pop this one out and we beat it. Got this one out of the way. And we beat that one. So really fun game. Um, very different and very unique because right off the bat, you can just go for and get all these Pokemon. Um, whereas before in, in other games, you have to go to particular roads and get them. A lot of places, a lot of these like the Pokemon are available in the wild, but they're tough to beat until you gain levels and all of that. But it's a fun game. The story was good. Uh, I like this one. This one, a uh, very good Pokemon game. If you guys haven't played this one get it it's a good one um next game that i that i beat with my son this one i got the monkey off my back because it took me forever to beat and that's bendy and the ink machine for the xbox one my son is a fan of the bendy stuff um we got this game may a few years back when my son was younger I was very hesitant to play this game with him because I had a lot of jump scares and all of that. And my son used to get really scared about it. Um, recently, you know, as he grew older, he got more tolerant to, to jump scares and things like that. So I finally revisited this one and um, we beat it together. I had gone to the very last part of the game and then I stopped. And then I told myself, I don't want to go back because this is one of those games that... After you play a while, it's kind of like Cuphead where you play, you play, you play. And then you get kind of like, ah, in my opinion, for me, like I just didn't like that. So um, we ended up beating it. Got to say that the ending to this game was very convoluted, very confusing, but it was a good game nonetheless. Um, and my son, um, my son, as of the making of this video during the weekend, um, he was talking to me about Bed B2. And we were learning about it, that it came out on Steam but it still hasn't come out on consoles. When it comes out, I'm going to pick it up because I want to go um, more through the story. But yes, hopefully it doesn't take me that long to beat it. And then the final, um, uh, not the final game yet, but the final game on, on a digital download that I beat that was memorable. I mean, interesting that I have all these downloads and only four games this year were memorable. The last one, and I beat it with my son too, um, Undertale. Uh, for the Nintendo Switch. Um, very fun game. Me and my son had a lot of fun playing this one. Um, you know, you're basically this little... Well, if I go over in the story, like... It's one of those stories with a lot of theories. Kind of like Axiom Verge. Um, but it, it's very... It has that theory of the game. You're a little boy. I think you're a little boy or... or I don't know, a little boy or... You could be whatever... You fall in a pit and then you land into the monster realm and all of that. You're trying to find a way out. Um, but you got to do certain things. Like you want to get the best ending. You can't hurt anybody. You, you got to tough it out and not be able to um, create any damage because you don't. My son and I got the normal ending on it. So after I, you know, I started beating up a lot of the enemies, gaining levels until I read up on it. And I said, no, we can't do it. You know, so me and him were like, oh, no, we can't. We can't kill any enemies in the game or else it's going to get a bad ending. Um, but anyways, fun game, really good game. Um, next game that I beat with my son, another fun one that I bought many years ago, but finally decided to play it. Um, Songbird Symphony for the Nintendo Switch. Now, this isn't, I don't think this game came out. I think it came out digitally, but it didn't come out physical. Physical is available only. It's a, it's a European version. Really, really, really fun game. If you guys like those games, like, um, like rhythm games, this is a fun one. It's kind of like a, a Metroidvania Lite. Um, it's a 2D side-scrolling platformer. Metroidvania Lite, because you do got to go to certain places 
back again, but not that major. They made it really easy for kids. So it's a fun game for your kids if you guys want to get a good game for them. Really cute storyline. Um, basically, um, this little guy is trying to find his mom um, because he discovers that the person taking care of him is not his his parent and he goes out on a quest to find the mom um but he has to learn the notes and the songs from different birds from different um species of birds so it's a very fun game highly recommend it i actually thought about making a video for this one so i may in the future who knows um another game that i was very close on making a video but i didn't and i'll explain it in a minute song of the deep for the um xbox one Great, great, fantastic Metroidvania. Really, really, really fun game. I really enjoyed this one. This one I put in a lot of hours. I actually got 100% on it. Um, I put in the work on this one. But it's a very fun game. It was very addictive. So one of the reasons, you know, this year I feel like I didn't have that many games that I completed. But a lot of the games that I did complete were games that were super long. This is This isn't that long but for example like the the um the how do you call it the pokemon games and all of that this game is really interesting um i think you play this little girl named maria or marie who um who lives with her father near the sea and then one day the dad goes out fishing and never returns she waits for him for a really long time and decides to to take matters into her own hands um, builds this submarine and goes into the ocean to go looking for her dad um, because she um, her dad every night would tell her about the legend of of the deep you know and so she decided to go on an adventure and go in her in her submarine and discover that so the game is very unique because you play on the water and you play as a submarine um, you do get the character comes out you know and she, and she gets a lot of damage but it's to get to like tighter spots later in the game now, the reason why I didn't do a video is because I made it to 100%. Um, and, and in order for me to do a, a video, I like to show you guys from the beginning, like a certain up to a certain spot. Um, I was going to, my next thing was doing like a companion video where I talk about kind of like, you know, like a guide, a tour guide of the, of the area. Because once you kill all the enemies and you kill a lot of the enemies, they really don't spawn anymore. So it gets very like the ocean's just empty. So, but really fun game. You guys need to play this one. I highly recommend it. I think this is one of the, I haven't, I've played a few Xbox One games. A lot of them have been really good, but this is to me by far one of the best Xbox One games out there, in my opinion. So look that one out. Um, the next game. Um, now the next couple of games, these are games that I played on my, um, uh, either on emulators or on my um, on my PC Engine Mini, my TurboGrafx 16 Mini. The first one is um, I'll put an image. I'll put an image around right here. Um, the the first one of the of three is um ex well of four but three is Exile Two Wicked Phenomenon for the um, PC Engine um, TurboGrafx CD. Um, this one is a continuation of a game. Um, that I really like for the Genesis called Exile that I've been trying to make a video of that plays so much like the game East 3, the ones that I, I always compare it to, a 2D side-scrolling RPG. Um, the interesting thing about this game is that this game didn't really come out for many consoles. I think it was exclusive for the PC Engine, um, but it also came out, I believe, in another console, but it's a very rare game. Um, I would call it a game too expensive to own. But um, you play, again, as Sadler out with your friends to go defeat an, a wicked evil um, that has taken over the, the, the land. Um, very fun game. Um, this was a game that I've been trying to find a way to emulate it for so many years. And I finally had the capabilities of doing it. I loved it. Very fun game. Highly recommend it. The other next game that I wanted to do in this and these next two games, uh, I want to say they're, they're um, working design games. And the first one, and I also put an image, is and I, these I have on my um, on my TurboGrafx-16 Mini, is Parasol Stars. Um, now, this is kind of like a spinoff of Bubble Bobble, 
but it's more of like rain spin-off or bubble bobble continuation of Rainbow Islands, and it's a very difficult but very fun puzzle game. Um, another game that I've been trying to play for so many years but didn't have the capabilities of doing it, and I finally did. And then the other one was Kadash um, for the TurboGrafx-16. This one's also very similar to games like Ease, like Exile, which is a 2D side-scrolling RPG platformer. Metroidvania light a little bit and I and I use that with a grain of salt because you do have to go back in certain areas but you keep going on um very fun game um you I think you're out to defeat this evil king or this evil that has taken over the land as well so um that's another fun game that I've known of for many years but also was trying to play um and then now we get to one that I reviewed not long ago, and that is Dino City for the SNES. Um, very memorable game. And one of the reasons why is because I've had this game for many years. I've known of this game um, since I was a kid. Never knew that it was tied into a movie. Saw the movie and it brought me a lot of nostalgia from back in the days uh, of, of when I was a kid. Because it was like a very 80s um, movie a la dinosaurs. Um, and, and, and it was it was a, a quirky little movie to watch. Um, check out my review. I did it a, um, about a couple of months ago. Or not long ago. But it's out there. Um, very fun game and very nostalgic. It's one of those games that if I, I see it, I... I you know, it may, gives me fond memories about it. The next game, another game that I could say I took the monkey off my back because I I didn't put that on my notes, but I should say that too. Another game that I got the monkey off my back, and that is um, Kirby 64, The Crystal Shards for the Nintendo 64. This is one of those games that um, I've had the cartridge for many years. Um have tried playing it but it just like uh, this is the the way the game was it was kind of like okay um the thing is that i wanted to collect all the shards and i did but the problem is that you have to know the combinations of power-ups to, to to go into the secret areas and get them um finally um i i played this um during the time that i got my operation that i was sick um it's a fun game um but do i like this one you know, like I mentioned with the other Kirby um, games, you know, like there are certain games that I do like and certain ones that I don't. Uh, I don't say that this is a, a bad game, but it ain't great either. Um, I think there's better out there. So, yeah, but very memorable because I played it and I beat it during my <laughs> during my stint that I was sick um, again. <laughs> So um, more recently, and by the way, all of these games are going in order of how of when I beat them from the very first one at the beginning of the year to like the most current. Um, and then this one, this one I am releasing probably in the next week or two because I already have the video made. Um, but I want to throw it out there because this is a very interesting game. And that is Pocket Bomberman for the Game Boy Game Boy Color. Um very memorable game, very fun game because this is a game that I've known about for a long time, but was amazed of how they they took an old um, formula at that time, in my opinion. And I, I didn't mention this. I don't think I mentioned it in the mentioned this in the video that I'm about to release. Probably gonna release this video after I'll make this one that I'm doing right now, and then the week after I'll, I'll release this one maybe um but it's on the it's already done that video's already done and i'm gonna get ready to release it soon but um this is one of those games going back to what i was saying that um the formula worked on how they changed it it's basically a 2d side scrolling um platformer but with bomberman if that makes sense i won't say much about it because i want you guys to check out the video but uh very fun game i really like this one um then the next one that i that i beat with my son this one i beat with my son ah uh, what can i say um kirby's and the forgotten kirby and the forgotten land for the switch ah uh, what can i say about this other kirby game um that i haven't said before you know i'm it, it, it's a very different game. It's, it reminds me of Kirby 64. 
but much updated, much smoother, much better. The power-ups were really fun where you turn into a car, you turn into a fridge, you turn into this big giant circle that you can use on a boat. Very creative. I, but I just like, you know, what I didn't like is the, well, I think you don't have to do it, but I think I feel like you had to, to get a better ending. Um, you know, is, is all the extras you have to do in each level. Like you have to save all of these, um, where are these guys? It doesn't show them here, but you have to save like the little, um, oh yeah, it is. Is is that little dude right there? See that guy right there? You You have to save those guys in every level. There's like. 10 or an X amount of, of, of those guys. I think they're called Waddle Ds or whatever. You have to save an X amount of them in each stage, but you have to do certain tasks. Like for example, um, beat the level, beat the level. That's you get one. Um, beat the level by not getting killed, which was the, mm, the one that really got me. Another one, um, beat the level by looking, by eating a certain dessert or eating a certain item, things like that. I thought that was great, but it was bad. And um, is it a really fun Kirby game? Yes, it is. Did I like it? Yes, I did. Is it one of the best? I don't think so. I, I think um, I think between this one and Star Allies, I think I like Star Allies better because it's more of the old school Kirby, but man this is this is one of the i think in my opinion um it, it, it's not it's not kirby's dreamland it's not kirby's adventure it's not um kirby's dreamland 3 on the s on the snes it's not kirby's all-star you know it, it it's not those games it doesn't doesn't have that mystique of what they used to be they're great. Don't get me wrong. They're great for kids. It's a great money maker for Nintendo. No doubt about that. But, you know, there's still more to be desired. But I can't hate on the game. The game was fun. And it had a really good... Um, again, they suckered me thinking that I, the game was over. And it kept going. And me and my son were like, whoa, you know, he got amazed. He liked that feature. But I'm starting to hate that part of Nintendo. And I noticed that they're doing that to uh, several titles. And, and uh, I'll go into detail with one game in particular that uh, I'll go into that. I'm almost there, but I'll go into that. But anyways, moving right along. Another game I got the monkey off my back. Predator for the NES. Great cover. Great looking cartridge. Beautiful. But when you play it, it's not Arnold. It's some dude in some pink tights. Um game is a super super crazy platformer uh, it's like when my son says parkour like when you're playing roblox where you have to jump a bunch of little blocks um not really i think that there's stages that are normal stages and big stages where you kind of see a figure of arnold that looks more like him and it scrolls automatically those seem to be more fit with with the movie but not the other stuff. Now, I say that this is a game that I, I got the monkey off my back because I used to own this game when I was a kid. And um, and I couldn't beat it. And back then, you know, even with the coats or anything, I couldn't beat it. This time around, I did use coats. I did cheat and I don't care because this game is hard as hell. And you need to do that to enjoy this game. Otherwise, it, it won't be a fun game. But it was nonetheless memorable to me. Um Especially because earlier, sometime in the year, um, my girlfriend and I binged and watched every single Predator movie. You know, we went back and she likes the movies too. She likes El she likes the Predator franchise. I, I dig the Alien franchise too, but I'm more into the Predator and both of us. We like Alien versus Predator, so we enjoyed watching the movies again. Moving right along. Um, this game I don't own, even though I have the game. I played it on the, I emulated it, and that is Beyond Shadowgate for the PC Engine, um, Turbo Duo. I only own the manual. <laughs> I don't. I try to burn the game, but it didn't work. Um, back in the days, this is a game that I've been wanting to play so bad. Um, I actually thought about doing a. Um, a video on it but i decided not to because um the game was very slow but it was a unique experience this was a game that i've been wanting to play for so long 
that I finally did beat it and it was it was pretty interesting and fun. Um was it Shadow Gate like the one on Nintendo where you point and click? No. Um it was more of an adventure point and click because you also punch and you have to defeat certain enemies. But it was a fun game. Um very quirky dialogue and, and cutscenes and stuff. Not cutscenes but voice dialogues. But it was a fun, memorable game, and I finally, finally got to play it. And then finally, the very last game that my son and I beat that was very memorable, and I got to say, it was a really fun experience. Yokai Watch 2 Bony Spirits on the 3DS. Very, very, very fun game. Very fun game. Um... I beat part one and I thought part one was interesting and fun. And my son, you know, and I had to replay because my son wanted to see the ending. And I was like, oh my God, I beat it already. So I had to play Yokai part one. And then I began playing this one. This one went along a lot, a, a lot quicker. Like the, the, the flow of the game was much quicker than part one. Um, but very fun game. Um, I highly recommend you guys playing this one if you haven't. Um, it continues the story of, of, um, of Nate and um and his butler um oh my god whisper and Jabanyan and the rest of the characters where they go back in time to to save um um the city of Springdale and the the past city from an evil entity that's trying to take over the world and, and rule with all bad yokai. Very fun game. I think so far this is the best yokai game that I've played. I'm playing part three right now. Um, I've only played like about about an hour and a half. And it has a lot of blah, blah, blah dialogue. It doesn't really get you to the action. This one does do that. But it, it puts you more action oriented to play it. Um, I'm, I'm playing it right now part three. Because part three is a very, very, very rare game. Um, that game will cost you about like 300 bucks. And, but I was able to download it. And my son and I are enjoying it. So yes, that was the very last game that I beat. Um, uh, kind of like a good game to go out with a bang, you know. I really enjoy. It. I think for now this is my favorite yokai game. But I do have two runner ups. Um, first runner up, um, I will have an image of it, and that is um, um, a game that I was gonna review during Halloween, but I didn't. And I, as you guys know, I chose um, the Pumpkin King for the Game Boy Advance. And that game is Savage Halloween for the PS4, PS5. It was a digital download. Very fun game. Um, very Contra-oriented. Um, where you are... Um, you guys rebel against the, the vampire who wants to take over Halloween forever. And these three monsters decide to rebel against him. Um, one of them being the daughter of Dracula or the daughter of the main guy and she's rebelling against the dad because they don't want to have halloween forever they just want it for one night very fun game i highly recommend that one if you guys haven't downloaded it and then the next runner up <laughs> this one is okay pokemon arceus now runner up of this one because i think that it's it's a very interesting and fun pokemon game this freaking game got me playing i was playing for it like since after i bit beat sword and shield my son wanted to play this one so both my son and i kind of beat it and this is where i'm complaining about how nintendo's suckering you that you beat a game and you don't because in this game you need to collect every single pokemon to be able to battle arceus collect Arceus and beat the game. I beat the general storyline, but to this day, I, I decided to add it as a runner up. I didn't want to add it as one of the, it is a memorable game nonetheless, but I'm kind of annoyed because I still have to collect Pokemon and, and get Arceus and see that one particular ending. And I don't think I'm gonna get into that one, you know, but I put it as a runner up because yeah, my son wanted it, um, he, he liked that game, so yeah. So these are my memorable games for 2022. Not a major list of games that I beat compared to 2021. However, I had a couple of great mem memorable games. Let's see what 2023 brings us. Um, 
I am looking forward to it to see what new games I get to play. I do have several games I want to get the monkey off my back from. Hopefully I do that and I can share it next year or at the end of the next year or at the end of, sorry, the end of this year because we're in 2023. Um, so anyways, this has been Eric the Bear Collector. You guys take care. Peace out. Yeah, my band, I messed up my fingers. Peace out. <laughs>